Number 29. Use the graph below to answer the question that follows. And guess what? It's got a graph on a coordinate grid, so I should be thinking algebra. It says, the graph above shows the distance d in miles and the time t in minutes for six bus routes around a city. Which of the following equations best models the relationship between d and t for the bus routes? And then it gives us a whole bunch of answer choices. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways I can go about this problem. I'm going to choose to do a way that's going to help you get to the answer. So rather than try and confuse you with some of the other stuff I said a few moments ago, let's just stick with some tried and true ways. I have here an x value. This is always my, in, this is going to represent, t represents, uh, this represents distance. And t represents the time. I'll call that y. So here, I'm going to just change this real quick. I can do that, and you can do that too. So I want you to do it. I know you may be like, but Chris, no, I want you to, I want you to make more sense of this. Get rid of this T and D business. I think it's only going to confuse you. Um, so every, for every distance that I go, let's say I go five, uh, five miles, it takes a certain amount of time. If I go 10 miles, it's going to take more time. If I go 30 miles, it's going to take more time. And so it's graphed. And we could, we, if we wanted to measure the, dis, the change in x and y, or we could think of this as distance over time, we can map out some of these points. Like, what do you think approximately this point is? Well, many of you are like, well, that's about 2 by 12. And then you may be like, uh, this point here is, I don't know, 12, 11 by 30. You're right. You're absolutely right on how you're going. I mean, this is correct, but there's a lot easier way of doing this. These lines, these points form a line. And what I want to do, if we were um, doing this on a test, I would have you take out your license. Uh, I would say, use your license to create a line of best fit. And because your license is there on your test, and why can't you use it? So you use your license. And what this does is, uh, when I create the line of best fit, I always go through the top point and the bottom point. This creates the average amounts. So technically, this is going to be an average line. And what it does, what's nice is that it gives me some very clear inputs and outputs that I can read. For example, when x is 0, y is 10. When x is 5, when I go 5 miles, y is 20. So I want you to start filling this up based on what you see. When x is 10, y is 30. All right, see what I did there? All right, now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test this out. I'm going to see which, I'm going to pick one of these points. Now, I don't want you to pick the zero for a lot of different reasons. So let's, let's see what happens. Not pick, pick the point that's not the zero, so 10 and 30. Which one of these equations, when I input 10, do I get a 30? And we're going to do this by doing an input-output strategy. If I input 10 here, does 10 equal 30? And you're going to be like, no. What about 10 plus 10? Does that get me 30? And you're like, no, it doesn't. What about 2 times 10? Does that get me 30? And you're like, no way. What about 2 times 10 plus 10? And you're like, yes. So let's go back. Um, I'm, imp I'm finding a value that's on my line of best fit. I made the line of best fit because it's much clearer and easier to pick, pick out numbers. Now I have a clear input and a clear output. I'm taking one of those values that's not equal to zero. I'm inputting it back into my equation. Um, when we tested out 10, 
when I double 10 and I add 10 to it, it equals 30. Okay, so this works. But let's say I wasn't 100% sure. Let's see what happens with 5. When I take 5, double it, and add 10, does it equal 20? Yes, it does. And when I take 0, 2 times 0 plus 10, does it equal 10? Yes, it does. <coughs> so using a very basic input-output strategy, <coughs> excuse me, I was able to solve this problem. Um, that's how I want to approach this problem. I don't want to go into linear functions and I don't want to go about that. I looked at the graph, I created a, um, a line of best fit, I used the line of best fit to come up with some very clear input and output. I thought of this as my x, my input, and this is my y, my output. I created a basic input output chart so that way I put 5 equals 5 equals 20, 10 equals 30. I took one of these points, it doesn't matter which one, I'll input the 10. I tested it out for every time I have an input, a distance. If I do those steps on this side of the equation, which one of them is going to get me an output that matches the 30 on this side of the equation? And it turns out that the only one that that works for is D. So I know that D is the equation that fits all these points on my graph. Okay team, I hope you found this helpful. Keep on sending your questions and um, check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. This is called the line, line of best fit and input output strategy and we can use this for linear equations or for any type of function which has a graph. It's a, it will always work. Uh, and there's of course other ways to do this too, but we're not going to do that today. Thank you team. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.